Thank you to the Chamber and the Paulding Public Safety Appreciation Board for recognizing the dedication, commitment, and outstanding service provided by all the members of our judicial system and our public safety agencies with us today. I've been working in the public safety industry for 35 years now, 35 plus years, and I'll tell you that the men and women represented in this room go to work every day with one thing in mind, and that is to protect and to serve your best interest. You know, living in a county like this, uh, we often take that for granted, but if any of you have ever lived in some smaller counties in rural Georgia, uh, it's, it's easy to, to see how great we have it here in Paulden County. These folks leave every morning not knowing what events the day will bring. They sacrifice time with their families and for each of us. And when disaster strikes and everyone's trying to get home to their loved ones, they're swimming upstream to protect you. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a dangerous time and I encourage all of you to take time to get to know these courageous men and women that wear the uniform. And I encourage you to pray for them and their families on a regular basis. Never take what they do for granted. Never doubt their resolve and never forget that it's not a matter of if, but when you're going to need them. And know that they will always be there for you and they will do everything in their power to keep you safe and to take away your pain. And on this special day, we gather in fellowship to acknowledge and recognize these great heroes for all that they do. and every one of y'all for coming and supporting what's going on. It's nice to get everybody together and kind of let our hair down a little bit and relax. Ain't been a lot of relaxing going on around here lately, so uh, tell y'all a little bit about some of the stuff we do. Uh, we've, got, we've got one of the, I'm going to be biased, I guess. I say we got one of the best SWAT teams in the state of Georgia. Uh, when you have a problem at your house and you dial 911, people like me and Ashley are the ones that shows up, and when we show up and we have a problem we dial 911, the guy like David Martin shows up. <laughs> if you want David Martin to come to your house, if you'll open up a box of those zebra cakes, he'll be looking in your window. <laughs> he don't look like it, but you can lead him around with a zebra cake. <laughs> uh, Got to have a little bit of fun, but these guys put in more work than I can stand here all day and describe to you. You'd have to come out and actually watch them training. We call it sweat and blood. These guys are on a very short leash. Uh, it don't mean something to a lot of people, but this guy can't get too far from home without permission. He can't do anything where he can't come to work with a phone call, so we keep him on a real short leash. It's more than a job. It's a lifestyle. You can say you want to do it, but until you live the life, you don't know what it's like. Canine's the same way, and I've I done that the biggest part of my career here, so I know what it's like to be at a family function or your kid's birthday party or Christmas, and the phone rings, and it's like, Sorry, folks, I got to go. Uh, these guys do it continuously. And if you want to actually have something bad happen in the county, plan a party. <laughs> I don't think when I was in K-9 we ever had a Christmas party that we didn't all leave our wives sitting there and go to work. So I'll tell you all a little bit about what we got going on. We spend a lot of money on these guys. The first part, of course, is training. Uh, each one of them is different. I, I'm not even going to get into a dollar amount. The number of hours is, is mind-boggling. It's probably three to four times the number of hours in training than these guys and just in the regular patrol deputy. Uh, the SWAT vest like David is wearing, everything that we do 
if you want to double the price on it, you add police to it or fire to it, and the price tag goes up. Uh, the vest he's firing, uh, you could take the rifle on his chest and shoot him with it, and he still gets to go home and see his family, which is why it's worth they're a little over $1,100 a piece, and everybody says that's too much money. Well, it is until you're the one on the other end of the shots. So <clears throat> whatever it takes to keep these guys safe will go out of our way. The helmet on his head is the same thing. It's $350. It, it, it don't look real good, but when in, the things gets bad, you'll put one on and you'll pull the strap real, real tight, I promise. Uh, the rifle he's wearing is like $1,500. bucks. Uh, the bunker he's carrying around in fr front of Ashley, they're anywhere from five to $7,000. Like I said, they're not real good until somebody's shooting at you. Then they're irreplaceable. Uh, you got anything you want to say? You want to speak? I just enjoy what I do. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I carry this equipment around. We train it with the equipment on. We just don't keep it in our cars and go shoot targets. So we train with this stuff on. It obviously weighs uh, a good amount because it's fully loaded. Got everything ready to go. Um, you got several different uh, <laughs> Duty ammo on me at all times and ready to go. We got to, you never know when you get the call. Um, loaded up like what I'm carrying right now, the total weight with the rifle on is probably about 65 pounds. <clears throat> so. it, it's nice when you're outside, it's about 110. <laughs> right. um, I'm actually our bunker guy, so typically my job is to carry the bunker. Uh, first one in the house, first one out of the house. So this is something that's is uh, the whole team relies on. You got a lot of a lot of uh, guys behind you walking in, and it does. It gives you a lot of uh, Protection gives the whole team protection and gives us courage to walk in and do what we need to do. Thank you, David. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, we'll get into K9 a little bit. Where Ricky Waters go? Sorry, ladies, he's married. You can't have him. I'm talking about Ricky, not the dog. What's up, Bickle? Uh, his his wife will thank me for that. We're moving. Give you all a little bit of room. Luckily for me, I know a little bit about this. I've, I've been a dog handler for 14 years, so I know how the canine in and out. Bickle's the first German Shepherd we had. We've always bought Belgian Malinois, but Ricky was a little slow, so we had to get him a slower dog. <laughs> so, as you can tell, this dog don't care anything about going to work. He wants to go home and do nothing. Uh, Bickle is a German Shepherd. Like I said, he was born in the Netherlands. He's five. He's five years old, right? Uh, he's dual purpose, which means that he will either find bombs or dope. Not the same, but they'll either do one or the other. Bickle is a, a drug dog. We have two different ways that they alert. The dog I had was an aggressive alert, which means if he found drugs, he would scratch on it where the odor was coming from, which was telling the dumb person there, which was me, that, hey, you might want to look right here. Uh, Bickle is trained different. When he smells something, he'll track it back to the source, and then he'll sit down. So if he sits... He's found dope. So if Bickle comes by you and sits beside you, don't leave. We need to talk to you. <clears throat> I know there's a lot of attorneys in the room, so if you want to get counsel while you're here, <clears throat> we can make that happen too. We have three full-service teams at the office. We have uh, Billy Hurst is uh, over the unit, and Kilgore is going through shoulder surgery, so he's kind of in and out right now. But these guys, same way. They're on a short leash. They're on call all the time. They can't go anywhere. You can't have a drink, you can't leave town unless I know about it. Because if we need you, I want to know who we got on online. So it's a short leash, it's a, I said it, it's, a, it's more than a job, it's a lifestyle. You gotta to wanna to do it. A lot of people wants to do it until you got it. And then it's like, when I had a dog, it's the first thing you do in the morning, it's the last thing you do every night. It don't matter whether it's raining, snowing, sleeting, you still got a dog to take care of and it's got, there becomes such a bond. Yeah, Let's see if I can get through this. There becomes such a bond when you're doing this, it's almost unexplainable. I know a lot of people's got dogs and you think, well, I love my dog. You have no idea what it's like until this dog will protect you and he won't eat for trying to protect you and he's with you every day. Best partner I ever had, he'll stop when you want to stop. He'll go when you want to go. They don't care anything about doing anything but going to work. Uh, I see David Austin here, when I retired my dog, I'm not gonna pick on you, Dave. When I retired my dog, we went to the commissioners and told them we wanted to retire the dog. The commissioners was great about we were able to retire the dog and give it to the handler that worked the dog the whole time, and the commissioners kept feeding them and paying their vet bills until, they were, <clears throat> until they wouldn't hear anymore. I retired my first dog, Bosco, and I started a second dog, and I had the bright idea when I got elected sheriff, I'm going to keep working a dog, and then I'll do 
the sheriffing too. Well, then I found out what sheriffing was doing. So, uh, matter of fact, I think Ricky wound up with one of my dogs. You worked yeah. Hondo. No, he worked. He got Ashley's dog. When Ashley started doing this, was Grip. Brandon got my dog Hondo that I worked for a while, and I got tired of seeing him sitting in the car while I was being the sheriff. You're not going to be the sheriff and a dog handler in this county at the same time. I promise you. One of them you're not going to be able to do. But we'll kind of show you a little bit about him. Uh, we got some dope put out. We got boxes here. Some of them is clean and some of them ain't. Ricky will tell you the dog to go find a dope. Uh, it's real smart. You can't talk to these dogs because they're trained in Dutch. So if you hear him talking kind of funny, he's not really crazy. He's just talking to his dog. Bickle does a great job, and I'll let him show you all a little, a little demo of what he does. Whenever you are. He finds it, he sits down, he gives him his toy. Uh, when I went to school, marijuana in the center box. When I went to school to get a dog, they say they get these dogs addicted to the drugs so that they'll find them. What's this dog addicted to? <laughs> he can care less about that dope. He's addicted to that toy in his pocket. So once he gets the toy, he's like, we're done. Let's go play with daddy. So uh, the good thing with the dual... The good thing with the dual purpose dogs is you've always got them in your car. And that's what I say to everybody will buy a, just a regular dog that just does drugs. And I say, why do that when you can get one that'll protect you too? Same way with Bickle, if he's riding with Ricky and he's out and about and he needs a partner, best partner he's ever had right there, I promise you. Uh, he will protect you, don't care what you say. You talk about Bickle's mom and dad, he don't care. <laughs> if Ricky tells him to bite you, he will. If he tells him to quit, he will. Hey, Micah. <laughs> You sure look nice today. <laughs> <laughs> Bickle don't like politicians either. <clears throat> but we'll kind of show y'all a little, little bite demo here. Ricky tells the dog to bite, he bites. He tells him to quit, he quits. He's not really mean at all. He's just doing what he's told. As soon as he tells him to quit biting you, the guy that he just bit, will, he can pet him. It don't make any difference to the dog. Show him what he'll do, Ricky. He bites him. If anybody wants to try this on for size, you're welcome to come up here. We'll get you one. Uh, he, he tells him to quit, he quits. The good thing about it, he's not a big, vicious, mean police dog. Now he can pet him and play with him, play with his toy. He don't care. And of course, he can tell him to bite him again, and he will. He can tell him to bite Micah, and he will. Hi, Micah. <laughs> A little nervous. <laughs> uh, anything you want to allow, Ricky? Yep. I'd like to thank everybody for having us today. Uh, like the sheriff said, we uh, he's a dual purpose canine. We spend most of our time looking for bad guys because unfortunately when people break the law, they don't always like to go to jail. So we ended up having to track him down into the woods. And uh, with him being a dual purpose canine, that's what he can do. He can find narcotics. And then the dual purpose side, he can track people, do area searches, and find them when they're laid down into the woods, and also do building searches. So I can send canine vehicle into a building, and he can go into the building and he'll alert or find the suspect and apprehend the suspect. Now this is an apprehension dog. He is not a police attack canine. I hear that phrase used way too much. There's nothing about this dog that's attacked. When he bites, he will bite and hold the suspect until I get there. Okay. A lot of the lawyers in here understand the case laws we have to go by on uh, what we can send the dogs on and can't send them on. And if the suspect's not resistant, we can't let the dog bite them. So we have to be very careful and uh, very trained to handle these dogs. So I'd like to thank you guys for having us and everything the sheriff said. We had a, we had a lot to overcome. Everybody remembers back in the 60s with the civil rights stuff going on. Police dogs back then were just mean and vicious, and they bit everybody. They'd bite the handler, the cops around them, and anybody they could get to. They just bit people. Uh, we had to get completely away from that. As you can see, this dog is, as I used to tell them, my dog was like push button. He had a switch. You flip a switch, off and on. They've got to be that way. If he sends this dog, if you're running away and he sends him to bite you, and you decide, oh, I don't want no more of this, I give up, he's got to be able to stop this dog while he's in route. Extremely hard to do. The old dogs, they would be like, yeah, he's going to get bit. <laughs> uh, Every one of these dogs, we, we call it recall. They have to be certified every year. We certify with, 
one or two different national organizations and they tell us what, what level they have to be at. Every one of our dogs, you can send them after a bad guy. As long as he'll stop, you can recall the dog or down him, tell him to stay. Uh, very good dogs. Uh, never had to bite the same person twice. <laughs> Most of the time when you, when you jump out, as you heard him telling him, we have to go through a little rhetoric. Basically, you have to give them a chance to give up, which is tell them, stop or I'll send my dog, stop or I'll send my dog. And that kind of keys the dog up on, okay, we're fixing to go to work. So, but if you stop, we don't send the dog. So, uh, great tool for us. Uh, a lot of money involved in them. Most of these dogs, is, especially since everything started going over in the sandbox, ten dollars to $15,000 to get one of these dogs. We started buying green dogs that wouldn't completely train and doing their own training in-house. Uh, these guys put a lot of time in this. So like I said, uh, they become more than you got to call them equipment because that's what they are. But once you take one of them home, they become family. I call mine son. He went with me. I eat his, I mean, you eat dog hair, you wear dog hair, you live in dog hair. Uh, you ain't never been in a car that smells like a dog until you get a sick dog in your car. And the air conditioner pulls it in and makes it cold, and it comes back out and it sticks to you. So, But it, it's a lifestyle. And the bad part is, is they become part of your family. Uh, your kids get attached to them. Your wife gets attached to them. And... The bad part, I don't know why God set it up this way, but I wish dogs outlived us, but they don't. So you also got to learn to give them up, and it's hard to do. So, And I'm going to shut up at that or I'll start squalling. Uh, anything anybody want to know about the, the K-9 or the SWAT stuff? Any questions I can hit real quick, and I'll shut up and get out of the way. How did he get his name? How did he get his name? He came here with it. His name actually means tough guy in Dutch, which when I found that out, that actually worked really well for a police officer. Just like a police officer, we had to be really nice until it's time to get tough. So. Uh, the good thing about the dogs, most of them when they come here, they're already named. Uh, they don't care about papers like Americans do. Uh, Americans breed dogs because they're pretty. They don't care what these dogs look like. They breed for what's between their ears, not for what they look like. The second dog I got come here with a name, Frodo. I said, it ends in O, and I love John Wayne. His name is now Hondo. <laughs> I wasn't riding around with a dog named Frodo. So you didn't change your... Some of them's changed and some of them ain't. Some of them are not real nice, so, but they've got a different way of naming dogs over there. Anything else? Usually we try to get them at least a year and a half old so they've got a good temperament, and it's kind of up to the dog. It's You could probably get one doing a single purpose work in probably three or four months, but if you start doing the bite work and all, you've probably got about a year's training in them before they're really squared away. Most of these dogs, once they get about three, is when they start getting in their prime, and from about three to six, they're really good, and then they, they get a little hard-headed about six, and then about eight, they're kind of like us. They kind of start coming back around again. So I see my friend Chris Kersey sitting back here, too. Hey, Chris, you nervous? <laughs> A lot of these people I've been to jail with before, they get nervous when I start talking. <laughs> I won't tell any war stories. Chris used to be a trooper here in Paulding, so thank you for coming, Chris. It's good to see old friends come back around. I could tell war stories for the rest of the day about me and you, but they would think I was lying. <laughs> and sorry, ladies, he's married too. He's cute. <laughs> thank y'all.